Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Amwell stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or sell. Amwell was formerly known as American Well. They changed their name because they want to get into other markets outside the United States because they don't want to be pigeonholed as American only. The company connects patients with doctors over secure video. You could think of this company as a Zoom for healthcare. Their headquarters are in Boston, Massachusetts, and the company was founded in 2006. It went public last year and trades on the New York Stock Exchange. It sells its platform as a subscription service to healthcare providers and insurance companies. Its service can be used on any website. So if a doctor is talking to a patient using Amwell, the doctor and patient are using the doctor's website. So nobody knows they're using Amwell, which is different than Zoom, because if I was using Zoom, everyone would know I was using Zoom. I can't integrate Zoom onto my website and change a name. But that's exactly what you do with Amwell. You can integrate it to your own company's website and put your logo on it. So it appears the company has their own personalized video conferencing app. This service was highly needed during COVID because during COVID, no one wanted to go out and go to doctor's offices because you might get sick or you might get others sick. When you could sit in your home and talk to your doctor, you don't have to drive anywhere, you don't have to wait in any waiting rooms, and you get 24 seven live online support with either your doctor or their staff. It operates in all 50 US states and supports over 80,000 providers. Since inception, the company had over 10 million video conference calls. Its largest customer is Anthem, who is also an investor in this company. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid-cap company, 3.1 billion market cap. They're trading at $13 a share, and they have 241 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future, and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see they have negative free cash flow each year. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That's also negative every year. Revenue is a sales for the company and that grows each year from 114 million up to 249 million. This company did really well in 2020 due to COVID and people using their service. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. Revenue minus cost of revenue gives you your gross profit. And that grew from 55 million to 89 million. Below that is operating expenses. And they have high operating expenses since they haven't hit break even yet. And they're still trying to grow their business and grow their revenue. So they do have negative operating income every year. And the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, which of course is negative every year. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. They don't have much in CapEx. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And they do have negative free cash flow every year. So they're running their business on capital stock. They issued 280 million in 2018, 46 million in 2019, and 1 billion when they IPO'd last year. Every time a company issues capital stock, that increases the shares outstanding, making your shares less valuable. Let's look at the capital structure. $1.2 billion of equity, 6 million of debt. They're 100% equity and their WAC is 13.8% and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated seven years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year seven. That's 2.9 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $1.3 billion. We divide that by 241 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 536. They're trading at $13, so they're trading at a 144% premium. It is a sell according to the model. The way I valued this company, I looked at their financials, 
their competitors' financials, and I thought they would generate about $3 billion of revenue by 2027. They should convert around 10% of that revenue to free cash flow. That's how I came up with the $323 million of free cash flow in 2027. The prior free cash flow is just backed into that $323 million. So of course this is an estimate. They can do much better or much worse than this. Also, the stock price is not based off of how much a company's making because their stock price would be negative because they're not making anything. Investors are forward thinking. They look towards the future of a company. A stock price can be driven way up before the company makes any money. It's also possible for a stock price to get pushed lower while the company's making a lot of money. Nine analysts priced this stock and the average price target was $21. The low was 14, the high was 35. This is the stock price since it started trading. It looks like it started at a little over $20. And then usually the stock price is driven up in the beginning. It looks like it went up, came down, then it went way up to over $40. It looks like there was a big sell-off and the stock price is well below its IPO price. So it looks like it could be a good value if you feel the future of this company is going to be really strong. According to my model, it's still overvalued. In 2009, Amwell raised $10 million in a Series A round. Then they raised another $37 million in 2012. In 2014, they raised $81 million. They raised $290 million in 2018. Also in 2018, they acquired Avizia. This helped the company strengthen its business model where it could connect doctors in different hospitals for consultations. In 2019, the company acquired Align Telehealth to expand its psychiatry offerings. In 2020, it changed its name from American Well to Amwell. Then in 2020, it raised $194 million right before its IPO. The company partnered with Apple to do a study of over 400,000 people. Those people wore an Apple Watch to detect their heart rate for atrial fibrillation. They also worked with the Cleveland Clinic to connect patients with their local providers. This is really interesting. They're working with Cisco to convert people's TVs into virtual medical offices. They also have partnerships with Cerna, Google, Philips, and Tidal Care. This information was from their first quarter of this year. They now have 81,000 providers, which is a 240% increase from last year. They had 1.6 million total visits in the first quarter. That's a 120% increase. And their revenue was 58 million, which was a 7% increase from last year. The stock has gone down 44% in the past 52 weeks while the S&P 500 went up 35%. The 52 week low was $10, the high was 44. And the stock is trading well below its 200 day moving average and also below its 50 day moving average. About three to four million shares are traded each day. Of the 241 million shares outstanding, 175 million are on float, 38% are held by institutions, and over 6% of the shares on float are shorted. This stock is down 39% in the past 90 days and 5% in the past 30 days. But in the past week, the stock is up 4%, which is better than the industry and the market. Analysts are forecasting their earnings to grow 21%, its industry 37%, and the market 15%. Analysts are forecasting their revenue to grow 23%, its industry 17%, and the market 9%. If you invested $10,000 when this company IPO'd, you'd be at $5,600 today. That's a 44% loss. The biggest shareholders are the founders of the company at 5.5% each, then Caledonia, Alliance, and Teva Pharmaceutical. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 33, the median is 22. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so we can't look at the PE. Their price of sales is 12.6, so investors are paying $12.60 for $1 revenue. That's worse than the market median and average. They do have a really good price to book of 2.6, which is better than the market median and average. Their current ratio is 10.8. They have nearly $1 billion of cash on their balance sheet. They have a ton of cash from their IPO. So they're more than well capitalized, even though they had negative free cash flow in the trailing 12 months. They have over $900 million of working capital. Working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. So they have a lot of cash to grow the business, whether organically or through acquisition. 
The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of five other companies in the same industry as Amwell. And if Amwell has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So we can't look at their PE. They are doing better in price to sales and price to book. They have a really high current ratio. They have a negative ROE, just like almost every other company in this industry. They have almost no debt, so that's good. And their market cap is smaller than average. They're at 3.1 billion, average is 8.5 billion. And of course, they're not paying a dividend because they don't have any profits at this point. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 144% premium, but this company is really revolutionary. They're doing some really exciting things within the medical industry. It's really important that people are able to contact their doctors without leaving their home. And you can't use something like Zoom because it's not secure. Plus, Zoom doesn't go on to any company's website. It's only on their platform. Amwell makes it convenient for any insurance company, doctor's office, or hospital to use their software within their website. It does appear the stock is still overvalued, but that doesn't mean the stock price cannot go up. If tomorrow this company came out with really good news that they're going to be going into a lot of other countries with their software, their stock price could go through the roof. So I do think it's a good long-term hold, although in the short term, it could be a bumpy ride. I rank their free cash flow as 1 out of 10, their revenue 6 out of 10, and their ratio is 5 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.